From dialogue improvements to new alarm mechanics, a lot has changed in Scrap Tales world and I have a lot of work to do, so let's get started with devlog number 5. Hi everyone, my name is Phil and I am the programmer for Scrap Tale. I am here this week to talk about all the things that have changed over the last few weeks as well as what the plans are for the future. Let's get started with change number 1, major map improvements. In the last devlog, we were still transitioning out of the blockout phase. But now, we have several new models in the map. Our plan for this level is to fill up as much as we can with simple shapes that can be easily modified to create variations. And once we are happy with that, we will begin adding unique buildings and structures to the map. Since I'm showing the map already, this makes for a good transition for item number 2, changes to the parkour system. Previously, ledges were detected automatically, and I'm not going to go into the technical aspect of this, but it gave us a lot of problems both in terms of design and programming. So we have turned it into a normal interaction structure that the player has to jump and interact with. To compensate, this made it very easy for us to begin working on a more fluid system for parkour, where the player can transition structures without jumping and interacting again. Moving on to item number 3, we have improved our dialogue visuals and added portraits to the sides so that you can clearly see who is speaking with who. We're still working on animations and visual cues to help guide the player, but we think this is a major step up from where we were before. The portraits turned out great and just overall make the game and characters more interesting. If you'd like to know more about these characters, leave a comment about it and subscribe so you don't miss out on any updates. Onwards to item number 4, we have changed how the tail selection works as the previous system wasn't very intuitive to use. It is now a simple selection system where you select a part like you would select a weapon in any other game. With your part selected, you can then use its positive or negative ability using Q or E respectively if you're on keyboard. This makes it much simpler and much more intuitive to use and it gives us some room to work with some other things in the future. While we are on that tail topic, I wanted to mention something that has caused some debate over here behind the scenes, which is how many tail parts should a player have equipped. We were arguing about whether we should keep it at a max of 2 tail parts, or if we should just let the player have all tails at the same time. For reference, we are planning on having 8 different tails for now. To me, this didn't really make a lot of sense. In fact, in my point of view, it has always made perfect sense that the player only has two tail parts equipped or else the game would be no fun. And then I realized that this is actually my own fault as I had never really set in stone how the full game works and if you don't really have the big picture of the game and its progression system, then a lot of mechanics just don't really make sense. So I'm going to give a quick explanation of the full game now, rather than just its mechanics, just so there is no confusion on what you should expect from this game. At its most basic core, Scrap Tale is a heist game with procedurally generated heists. We wanted to make a game that you can just mindlessly replay if you so wish to do. This is the aspect we want to carry over from games like Payday, Darkest Dungeon and Deep Rock Galactica. Every run I played from each of those games has felt completely unique because of the loadout I carried with me and because the map structure always has some randomness to it. Uh, and sure, I can follow the story of these games, complete the missions that I've been told to do, progress through the challenges and finally be beat the final boss, but I don't have to. I can just mindlessly grind and play new levels, try new loadouts, find new secrets, etc. We want Scraptail to be a replayable arcade game rather than a story game. I hope it's clearer now why we restrict the player loadout as much as we do. We still care a lot about the story and characters and we'll try to make that as good as we can, but that is not the focus of the game. Alright, let's get back to the changes. Number 5. We've changed alarms quite a bit. We've added a spotlight and some pop-ups to better indicate that an alarm has been activated. The doors that close off the level are now made from glass so that the player can clearly see that there is still more level to explore, but it's been blocked. And we have also changed the way the player has to deactivate the alarm. Previously you had to destroy the tower, but we turned that into a very simple minigame instead. While an alarm is on, it will get sworn by all enemies in the area, which previously didn't feel very good because the AI and combat felt janky. So we are currently working on improving that, but change number 6 was adding a combo counter, improving the AIs and how they cluster and attack the player, 
and we've began adding a special tail move whenever you hit a target combo counter. We believe this will incentivize the player to explore more combos and look forward to see Vivian perform an awesome move while in battle. Those were all of the big changes from the past week, but we also have some other minor ones that deserve an honorable mention, including the new vision status UI that tells you what your current scene status in the level is, we implemented a new target crosshair so that you always know what your tail is looking at, we began experimenting and mocking up some UI UX solutions to improve our communication with the, the player to explain how things work in the game. And then we have some value adjustments throughout the game just to really fine tune it. Okay, so that is all the changes we have from the past few weeks. If you would like to try all of this out yourself, it is available right now on our Patreon for the Master Thief tier Patreons. Which reminds me, thank you Dr. Kepper82 for your support, we really appreciate it. Over the next couple of weeks we will be focusing on improving the map and making it more dynamic, as well as optimizing the game and adding quality of life's features. New obstacles, items, UX improvements, and proper game controller support is what is in the plans right now. Before I end the video, I would like to give a shout out to Keenan Woodwall. They uploaded a devlog for a new movement shooter game about a month ago, and I thought it looked really cool in that it deserves more love, so go on over there and tell them I sent you, link is in the description. Thank you all so much for watching, subscribe if you'd like to keep up with Scraptal's updates, and I'll see you all in next week's video.